Okay, so what did LaPierre find? Well, when they turned up at the various establishments, they were served by all but one establishment. That's over 99% of establishments serving them. Six months later, when LaPierre got in touch with the places they'd visited and asked whether they would serve them, it was a different story. He received 128 responses and only one restaurant, or less than 1%, said that they would serve the Chinese guests. 7% said that whether they would serve them or not would depend on the circumstances, and 92% said that they would not serve them. So that's a very small number saying that they would serve them. That's the opposite of what they found when they actually turned up though. So the conclusion was that the attitudes and the behaviours of the people working in these places didn't match. They served the three travellers when they turned up, but when asked in advance, they said they would not serve them. Subsequent research by Wicker in 1969 and others came to a similar conclusion about the lack of a relationship between attitudes and behaviour. Now, people have criticised this initial conclusion for a number of reasons, however. One of the main issues pointed out is that LaPierre was not necessarily measuring the attitudes and behaviours of the same people. The person who served them when they turned up at the establishment was not necessarily the same person who replied when LaPierre talked to them six months later. So maybe it's not so surprising that the attitudes and behaviours were so different. He was measuring one person's behaviour and maybe another person's attitude. Later research has suggested that sometimes attitudes can predict behaviours, but it's somewhat complicated. Part of the reason the early research didn't find a strong relationship between attitudes and behaviour uh, was because of how people were measuring both of these things. You've seen how LaPierre got it wrong by measuring attitudes and behaviours of different people. It also matters how you measure attitudes and behaviours, even if you're actually measuring them for the same person. You need to measure attitudes and behaviour in the same way and in the same amount of detail. What I mean by this is, if you want to know if people will recycle, for example, it's probably not a good idea to measure their attitudes towards saving the environment. This is because we have a relatively specific behaviour, which is recycling, and we're measuring a general attitude, which is saving the environment. According to Fishbein and Eisen, who published this paper in 1974, attitudes and behaviour will be related when they're measured in the same way. They called this the principle of compatibility. The idea is that you need to measure attitudes and behaviours in a way that is similar or compatible. To do this, they said you need to take into account four things. The target or focus of the behaviour, the action, the behaviour itself, the time, which is when the behaviour is enacted, and finally, the context or situation that the behaviour is enacted in. For example, if we're interested in measuring the relationship between attitudes towards recycling and recycling behaviour, compatible measures might look like this. To measure attitudes, we would ask, to what extent do you support recycling all paper, tins and plastic over the next two weeks in your home? And two weeks later, to measure behaviour, we could ask, over the last two weeks, to what extent did you recycle all paper, tins and plastic in your home. The target is all paper, tins and plastic. The action is recycling. The time is over the next or last two weeks. And the context is in your home. According to the principle of compatibility, we would expect that a specific attitude, such as the one we just gave in that example, will predict a single behaviour better than a general attitude. We would also predict that if we use a general attitude measure, such as, do you think saving the environment is a good thing, then this will predict what we call a general behavioural index, which is really just a collection of behaviours. So we might measure recycling, but also how much water they save, whether they try to use public transport instead of drive, and other behaviours to help save the environment. Another reason for why attitudes sometimes are not very good predictors of behaviour is because other variables can become important in the relationship between attitudes and behaviour. For example, social norms also contribute to behaviour. 
I'm sure you can think about a time when you thought one thing, but your friends had a different attitude. You might not have behaved in the way that your attitude would suggest, but instead went along with your friends so that you would fit in. To further complicate things, the link between hearing a persuasive message and changing your behaviour is not so simple and involves many steps. For example, in Maguire's chain of persuasion model, after someone sends a persuasive message in your direction, you have to attend to the message and then comprehend the message before you can change your attitude and yield to the message. But then you still have to retain the message in memory to be able to act on it. So all of those steps have to happen successfully for a persuasive message to have an effect on your behaviour. If any one of them doesn't happen, then there's no behaviour change. So you can see while attitudes do relate to behaviours, it's a complicated relationship and we need careful research to fully understand how attitudes and behaviours will be related in any particular context.